Hey ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mel Herbert here for MRAP. Now, in the March MRAP, Rob and I will talk about syncope. And in one section, they talk about the EKG in syncope. And I found an article actually by Amel from 2007 and some other smart guys. And in that article, they say, look, look for your usual stuff, your arrhythmias, your ischemia, but then look for Brugada syndrome, look for QT prolongation, look for WPW and hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. We're going to go through that article, just the images from that article in this short video. So remember, for Brugada syndrome, you have an RSR pattern in V1 through V3 with SD segment elevation. For QT prolongation, you look for long QT interval. Thank you very much. For WPW, you have that slurred upstroke and that short PR interval. And for hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, big voltages like LVH and other big voltages all over the place. And you might see these needle-like Q waves, which are less than one small box wide, but really deep. Let's go through Amal's paper. Well, it's not just Amal's. He's got a lot of friends, but Amal's our friends. So let's just do it. All right, so the paper by Amal Matu and friends says you're going to look for four things over and above what you usually would do for arrhythmias and stuff. So you're going to look for Brugada syndrome. Okay. You can look for QT prolongation. You can look for hypostrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Got it. And we're going to look for WPW. If we look for these four things, um, we're not likely to miss an important cause of syncope because you're going to look for your arrhythmias, you're going to look for your other stuff, and we're going to be happy, yes, very happy, if we think about these four things. So let's look at their paper and look at the examples they gave us. So here's the case. Syncopal patient, young, healthy, look for your ischemia, look for your arrhythmias, you don't see any in particular. But then you start to ask yourself the question, is this Brugada, is it QT, is it hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, is it WPW? And so I look for WPW by looking for a slurred upstroke in the QRS. I look for a short PR interval, and there is, in fact, short PR intervals and slurred upstrokes. Slurred upstroke, short PR interval. So this is a pretty, you know, more slurred upstrokes. This is pretty clearly WPW. Let's do another one. So here's another one. And you look for ischemia, you look for arrhythmias, you look for the usual stuff. Then you ask yourself, could this big Brugada QT prolongation, could be a obstructive cardiomyopathy, hard to say, or WPW. Things you notice here, the eyes are drawn to V1, V2, and V3. And I see SD segment elevation. Here's the baseline. I see some SD segment elevation here. I see it again in here. And I see this sort of saddle thing. And then I have an R. S R prime, and then I have an R S R prime with S D segment elevation in the anterior leads, and somebody without chest pain, and syncope. This is Brugada syndrome, so you've got R S R. So that's a right bundle branch block pattern, and you've got S D segment elevation in a syncope patient. It equals Brugada syndrome. So let's look at this puppy again. Look for arrhythmias, look for uh, ischemia, and then go through the list. Is it Brugada syndrome? I don't see the RSR pattern, no. Um, is it QT prolongation? Well, actually, look at this. This is the end of the T-wave. It's really long. Here's the end of the T-wave. If you use the usual sort of uh, eyeballing criteria, oh, go away. If you take the R and the R and you split it right down the middle, the T-wave should be done its business on that side of that uh, RR interval. But these T waves, are, look, it's finishing all the way down here. So R and R, and it should be done by now, and it ain't done. So this is QT prolongation. Really easy to miss QT prolongation unless you actually think about it. So here's another one. Look for arrhythmias, you look for ischemia, and then you ask yourself, could it be Brugada? Could it be QT prolongation? Could it be hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy? Could it be WPW? The eyes in this one are drawn to the fact that there is no increase in, in uh, the QT interval isn't long. There is no RSR pattern in V1, V2, V3. Um, there's no slurring of the upstroke. There's no short PR intervals. Oh, that's a little short, but there's no slurring of the upstroke here. So you do notice these big, big voltages though, right? So let's clear this. So what you do have is big voltages, big voltages, and these needle-like Q waves. Big voltages, big voltage, big voltage. Needle-like Q waves, needle-like Q waves. And that's hypertrophic obstructive or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Um, lots of different names for it. So there it is, okay? In the paper, they go into detail in each of these four things that we've been talking about. But what do you think this is as an example of? 
right? So you've got V1, V2. You see again this R, S, R prime, R, S, R prime. So it's a right bundle branch block pattern in both of these, R, S, R prime in V1, V2. So it's a right bundle branch lock pattern. But what they're making out here is that there's two, there's actually more than two, but they're showing two different types of Brugada syndrome. Type A, which is sort of called coved, where it goes like this. So it's coved. Um, my little writing instrument isn't working so well here. And here it's again coved. But on this one, it's more of a saddle. You see this saddle appearance, saddle appearance. So coved and saddle. Appearance, so there's a couple of different ones, and then there's another type which looks very similar to normal, but RSR, ST segment elevation, cove type, saddle type, these are Brugada syndrome. And finally, on this uh, section of the paper, they talk about the different ways that hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy can present. So here's an example in A of big giant voltages and those needle like Q waves, which is sort of the classic way it can present. Remember that in here in B, you can have these repolarization abnormalities of the T waves that can fool you. Um, here in C, same thing again, you can have these big voltages, big voltages, big voltages in the anterior leads. And in D, huge voltages in V6 and uh, in lead uh, V1 as well. So think hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy when you've got big voltages and particularly when you get those classic needle-like Q waves that are really short, narrow, and really deep like that. So again, you're going to think about Brugada with the RSR right bundle branch block pattern V1 through V3. You're going to think about QT prolongation, which is QT prolongation, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy with big voltages, so big volts, and the needle Qs. And then you're going to think about uh, WPW with the PR that's short and the slurred upstroke of the QRS. All right, think about these four things, you make a legend of yourself.